Hey there, what's up everybody? So someone recently asked me how I would make these Zoom boxes in Avid. And the first thing I'll say is I would not make it in Avid. I would make it in After Effects where you can use guides and rulers and even mat keys and ways to manipulate the footage underneath or at least set up a grid with using math and the number of boxes to make a real even look and then bring that into Avid and, and copy that from there. But I'm going to make this video as if Maybe I don't have After Effects at a place that I work at, or I don't know After Effects yet, and let's try to make some kind of zoom box look in Avid. All right, so to me, you're going to need some sort of reference. Otherwise, you're going to be spinning your wheels, trying to pick, fix a box, pick a box, the size of a box that will match. So this one right here is a reference of basically 5x5. Five five. There's 25 zoom boxes here. The first thing I would do is I get my clip, and now I'm going to drag my 3D warp onto this image of, this, my, my, of an American football player named Sam Darnold. And I'm going to use this XZ position tool right here, this big arrow. And I'm going to drag it. If I can do that, I'm going to drag it down until it fits the size of one of these boxes. Okay. Very close. And for this purposes, I'm going to say close enough. So I have my one box here. I'm going to, it's on V1. I'm going to put it on the upper... I'm going to say this is the size of my box for 25 boxes I want. I'm going to go back into the source record mode. And what I'm going to do is copy that in the, into, copy and paste that into the monitor. First thing I'm going to do is cut that on V1. Because that's going to be, this is my, my main box. For, so all other boxes will be created. So now what I'm going to do is copy that same image onto five. I need five clips. So we go there, and then we're going to 4, and then we're going to 5. So now I have 5 boxes in theory. They're all in the same spot. So now the key is I want to move each one down. I want to make sure I have no keyframe on it. You have to be very careful. If you have keyframes, it's going to move. It's going to get very confusing as to where your box is. So here's my second box here. I'm going to hold Shift show you right here while I'm in this XY mode excuse me XY position mode not XY not XZ position we were we were affecting the size before with the Z position but in XY mode this little button right here now I'm going to shift drag this down I'm gonna to try to leave a little space I believe any boxes grids needs to have a little black in between it and now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other three. I'm going to delete the keyframe. I'm going to hold shift, then 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 grab it and move it down a little bit. And now we'll go to number four. And now, right, smaller. So how do I want to deal with this? Because now these five boxes are not even. It's not a great situation. So what I would probably do is start moving this box up. I'm in the XY position. I would start nudging it so one thing to think about what's happening with Avid here, it's going to get a little funky. And what's happening here is that my Avid system is basically saying, I can't even show you what's happening with all these uh, layers. My computer system might be just running slow for whatever reason. So now what I did was I rendered the first layer, assumed my first layer was good. And I was going to nudge it up, the Y position up a little bit. And the same thing with three. My, I have to make sure my X position, when I was grabbing it, it was moving a little bit. You really want to be precise with that stuff. And now I'm going to move just the Y position a little bit. I want to nudge that up. So this is a really tedious, boring process that I'm not going to force anyone to watch here. And we'll skip forward and, and imagine I got to the end here. So again, Avid was starting slowing up on my level. And one way to get around that is to render each layer. If you know V1 is good and V2 is good, render that. Then work with V3, etc. So now, in theory, I have this film strip look of one strip. But unfortunately, I need five more. So the way I'm going to do this to save myself from this hell of tedious box moving like that is one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to copy and paste that because I don't want to mess up this original one. Okay. And now I, in this second one, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to collapse this track. You can get this from the command palette. Is it from other? Yes, it's collapsed. The collapse tool will now take these five layers, and if I collapse them, they will become one layer. So let me render that because otherwise it's probably going to be a pain in the neck of my system. So it's rendered, and now when I copy and paste this onto V2, what I have here now is a duplicate of that five. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put a alt drag a 3D warp on top of that and I'm going to drag this if I can do that I'm going to shift hold shift hold shift and drag this right and now I have another strip and we'll do that two more times and now you can see that my whole 5 by 5 grid here it's not very even the bottom and the right column are not full as the other four are. They're cut off, you know, a little bit. So one thing I could try to do, I'm going to add a 3D warp over the whole thing. I could blow it up a little bit, and that might help it make it a little more even. Not that great, though. A little bit. And now the key is to replace each box and again this is like a sort of organizing labeling system I know here I have right and I'm, this is all about stepping in now I have this shot and I where am I gonna go here I have to go to sort of column one not shot one because I'm gonna leave that the first shot but the second shot I'm stepping in and I'm cutting an image into each box Right, I'm double clicking and I'm double clicking to step in and then I'm clicking another image. It doesn't have to be a still image, I'm just using still images. Obviously it can be moving video. And again, it gets confusing with what are you cutting and what are you not. You know, you got all these layers. It's not this is not a simple process. So if someone says, Oh, could you just make a zoom video for me in Avid? I would say, yes, I could, but this would take a long time, which again, you could see Avid is like having a hard time dealing with this. This is a lot of layers and compositing for an Avid system to deal with. And now you see I replaced the four images, and in theory, I could do that for each and every box. So, I don't know. Hopefully, that, if that was me, it would probably turn me off of ever doing a, making a zoom video in Avid but I don't know if you had less boxes and you weren't hung over and you had a day to spare and you know you could do it so something to think about again this is this tool the, Avid is not a compositing tool Avid is best used for editing movies and scripts and, and then someone else takes it into another program to add the effects and to add things like this. So something to think about. And another thing to think about is beer. I want to give a shout out to the king of beers, Budweiser. I had one for a very special family reason very recently. And it was one of my first original beers. Nothing beats a nice can of Bud and especially the guy who first taught me to drink it. So anybody that's looking to learn Avid, go to avidbeer.com. There will be an After Effects course one day. There will be an Avid 2020 course one day even sooner than that. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.